I'm going to show you inside a set of forced induction turbos, what the problem is with them and how to fix them and make them more reliable. Pieces here, this is original, that, this is original, and this is what you need to, to make this right. There is some modification necessary because it's not quite the same as what needs to be here. So what needs to make this fit inside their bearing housing is it's got an extra pinhole here. You'll have to take this line it up and you know you can throw some paint on there whatever you need to do or if you want to just hold them together but you need to run a drill through there to make an alignment pin for this to work and their bearing housing this turbo is you know when they sell this it's just like a remake as of a s300 this is a s372 what happened with this one, this piece being steel, it just causes a bunch of problems. It heats up really bad. The, what you really need is you need a copper bar thrust bearing that's going to dissipate the heat properly, which is clearly proven because this is used in OEM turbos. It's used in whole set turbos. They use this material all the way to their semi trucks that's why they don't have problems like this but what they try to do here is use this bearing as an upgrade see it's got multiple oil ports in here which is good but the material just causes a bunch of problems because it overheats see that right there this is what came out of it and this is what it should look like it should just be a flat surface there the bearings, they were a little bit worn on the journal bearings, but it really wasn't that bad. I think what was going on there, I think when they put this turbo together, when it, when it left forced induction, I think it was just a little bit dirty because I already rebuilt one of these of the twin turbo set. And when I rebuilt it and it came back, the bearings were in perfect shape on the journal bearings which means that this guy's oil was not contaminated. So that should have never even happened, even if this happened, unless the debris went, went inside those bearings, but that's very unlikely. So the damage of this caused this compressor wheel to rub. I'm just gonna file that. I don't have a replacement wheel for this, so I'll file it out, I'll rebalance it, and put this thing back together. It also puts some wear on to the compressor housing, but I'm going to sand that off there and that should fix that problem. I had this rebuild kit on Amazon. I'm super low on inventory of this item. So if you need one and you're willing to drill the hole, then I would suggest picking this up because this is going to prevent you from having these type of problems. This was on a twin turbo car making about 1400 horsepower. These are S372s. And once we converted one of the turbos to the brass bearing, it fixed it. Somebody bought the turbos because the guy upgraded and he wanted me to rebuild them, the new guy. And this is what I'm seeing was the turbo with the brass bearing did not need a rebuild, but the turbo that he didn't rebuild that had the steel bearing did need a rebuild. So that's what kind of results you get from the original bearing. If you change that out, you'll prevent yourself from having a bunch of headaches with this because it could cause your compressor wheel to need to be replaced and your turbine in which you probably can't get replacement parts. So you're gonna have to buy another turbo in which you'll be stuck with this again until you finally realize I need to go with this bearing to prevent this from happening and it will save you a ton of money over time. I'll leave a link for my rebuild kit. These are all the rebuild kits that we sell. There's nothing here that I'm selling that isn't my own stuff that we don't use. We use all these parts here. They all come to me and then I go through and I clean them all before and inspect them before sending them out to Amazon. I also include an O-ring. If you're willing to machine the bearing housing, you could use that. Otherwise you can't use it but the O-ring seals the compressor housing and bearing housing together, so you don't have to worry about it leaking there. This, this is the second problem that these have. When they send these to you, I'm guessing they sent this strain with this, either that or the guy had to buy one. These were made too small, so I machined them these out to 5 8 which is 0.625 inches. And if you were to measure it before we machined it, they're usually about 
they're half they're less than half an inch so they're about 12 millimeter so they're probably about 450 thousandths it's just not big enough for the drain necessary on these turbos on a turbo this size that comes off a factory vehicle the drains are usually about 19 millimeter inside diameter when i cut this out to 5 8 that's not even close to 19 that's more like 15 to 6 between 15 and 16 millimeter i'm still under on size on that but this is big enough for it to work properly what happens is when you start to use something that's less than half an inch for the drain it starts to build back up into the cartridge and not allow it to escape this drain and then once it builds back up in the cartridge it goes out both seals the front and the rear of the turbo then when people realize that they say and read on the internet that you need a restrictor so they restrict the feed going to the turbo it stops leaking oil as a result of that however now because you have less oiling it's less cooling it's overheating in the turbo and then the turbo needs a rebuild soon after that so just go ahead and take a drain drill it out machine it out whatever you got to do i've got the perfect setup to machine these out so i can cut these if you need it done but i've always just done them for people that send in stuff for rebuilds but i could machine them pretty easily it's not that hard if you need me to do that